I want you all to meet Arnold. Arnold is a deacon at his local church. Um, he goes to church, he reads the Bible, he stays away from all those godless people, you know, all those sinners. Um, but, you know, o- only when he's at church, you know, he needs to look nice, right? So, he stays away from them, but when he's away from church, he hangs out with those same people that at, at, at church, you know, he condemns them to seem that he's righteous, but then when he goes away from church, he hangs out with the same people. Um, he swears, he drinks, and he's generally a jerk. But everybody thinks he's a great spiritual leader. Kind of like Diotrophes. Kind of s- similar idea. So we... Oh, thank you. We pretty much know why it's bad. <coughs> we covered that last night. That's what, not what I'm going to um, cover this morning. What I'm rather going to cover this morning is how we can deeper, what we can do to not be um, next, not be like Arnold. So there's this. You may, yeah. This, this will probably seem very unsurprising. I'm going to talk about marketing and SEO because I found something very interesting (laughs) that helped me understand all of this. So I had, you know, a lot of us know all of this stuff, all of these stories, all of these different testimonies, prophecies, all these things in the Bible. But, and you know, I I had understood all this stuff, but it just kind of seemed overwhelming, like, so much. I didn't know where to put everything. And then I I started learning marketing. One thing that's interesting in marketing is SEO, search engine optimization. It's where you try to get your site high on the search results. And a lot of people just think of, you know, keywords and stuff like this. You get the right keywords, so people type in those keywords and you show up. But it, you know, it has a lot more <coughs> to SEO than that. Um, you can go to the next slide. So you pretty much have your main website, and then it, you look at your audience, and then you make tons of content all around it. Like maybe you can make a blog on some other channel or on some other, you know, website that, or you know, all these different stuff that points to where the central website that you want to bring everyone to. No, so the next slide. This is kind of how I was able to organize all this. I kind of saw um, there's these key things that God wants us to grasp. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. It's really what makes um, your spiritual life alive. really makes it real. And it keeps you out of taking everything for granted. And becoming like Diotrophes. Because he knows all the stuff, but he doesn't really believe it. So, all of this stuff around it in the Bible, the prophecies, the sanctuary, the Bible stories, um, testimonies, all these things are all like content of the SEO pointing towards the central website or the central thing that God wants us to grasp. Now, if you, if you don't understand this, it can seem a little confusing with all of this other stuff. Um, but once you understand this, it really makes it real. But what is this? Let's have the next slide. I believe. I believe. No, let's not have the next slide. Um, let's just stay there. So the main things that God wants us to grasp... Um, I don't really have a succinct name for the first one, so just bear it with me. I'll explain it. So, you kind of have to grasp. So, f- first, God created us, right? He created us. Um, we were perfect. We were sinless. We were in the image of God. So, the problem that came in was Satan came along, 
he had an enticing product, and he tried, decided to sell it to us. So we bought it, and we started sinning. Now, when we sin, this sin stays with us. But the sin is separate from us. The sin can be removed, although there is scars that still stay there. And so this sin came in. It, you know, it was our choice to sin. But now there's an even worse problem. God loves us. God wants to be with us. But if he comes to us and comes into our presence, if, if we come into his presence, we will die. Because God is consuming fire. He consumes all sin. And now if we are holding on to that sin, you can't hold coals and not be burned. Except if you juggle them like I did on camp out. But I still got a little bit burnt, after, you know. Um, so a lot of people try to juggle the sin, but it doesn't really work. You, you end up getting burned. And so what happens is God can't be with us now. God loves us so much he wants to be with us. But in fact, he loves us enough that he will stay away. I mean, can you imagine this mental struggle that God is in? Because he loves us. But we love our sin more than him. And we hold on to that sin, and he can't be with us. Now, if, if you think of practical ways, like analogies, um, practical ways, if, if we were God, I think we would all get really frustrated. Like, I died for you, I created you, I love you, and yet you won't even let me come. Or actually, you, you will, but I won't come because I love you. Can you imagine how, like, why on earth does God love us? There's absolutely no reason why God should love us. None. None at all. It makes no sense, except that his love is so much greater than anything we've ever experienced. So, God dies. He gives us a way to get rid of that sin. But it's still our choice to let him have that sin. And um, we... You know, we want to hold on to that sin. But then get this. So you, you've got all this sin and all these people. You've got to get rid of the sin at some point. Like, it, it has to stop. You've got to get rid of it at some point. But he is giving us this time of probation. This time where we can decide to give him that sin to let go of that sin. And so we can be with him because the only way that we can actually make it to heaven is not by just having some legalistic do this, do that. We must have a relationship with him. You know, the verse, you know, we've, we've done all this stuff and they come and God's like, I mean, yeah, that's nice, but I never knew you. You, you never got to know me. And that's the only way that our sin can be removed. Because we must trust God that he will remove our sin. And this is the only way that um, the next thing, that, the next key thing will work. Um, but God, you know, has to get rid of this sin. He's in a struggle because... He loves us. We are killing ourselves. 
by holding on to that sin because he has to get rid of it at some point. He has to come down. He has to let his glory be seen. But if we don't let go of that sin, that very thing is going to kill us. We are going to kill ourselves by holding on to that sin. So, does this seem mean for God to destroy all of this in the end, like at the second resurrection? In this context, it doesn't really seem mean, does it? So, this is um, the second part of this key thing that we must understand. First, we must understand how, um, how this sin is, it, you know, what this problem is. Basically, the great controversy in, in this more deep level. But the next thing, um, you can have the next slide, is the mission. This is not advertising, away publishing. Um, so, a key part of SEO, another analogy, is there, there's like these certain questions that you're supposed to ask about your company or about your organization. One of them is, is my product worth, is it, is it good enough where people care about it enough to promote it themselves? Is what God has to offer worth us promoting? And this is what he calls us to do in the Great Commission. We are not only to understand this, but we are to spread this to the world. Um, one interesting thing, there's a quote. It says, if we see a, um, if we see a mission given to us by an earthly king to be an honor, how greater would we see a heavenly king's mission given to us to be? If, if you think about that, it, it just totally makes anything that you ever thought about the Great Commission you, you wonder why on earth you, you aren't fulfilling this. I mean, it, it is hard, yeah. But the problem is, is we must have that connection. If we don't have that connection, the Great Commission will not work. We must have this connection with God, because that not only lets us trust Him to give Him our sins, but it also makes it to where we can get direct input from God. Because he has it all planned out, right? He probably has, I don't know if there's books in heaven. I mean, oh yeah, there's books in heaven, but I don't know if there's books on this, but, or if he has them written all down. But he probably has like stacks of huge books that have the whole plan of how everybody is going to do each thing and what's going to happen and then over and over again, we mess up his plans. Now, the amazing thing is, he is still going to succeed, even though we've messed up his plans over and over and over again. He has them so well planned out. He has a thousand ways, you know. And every time we mess up his plan, he can find another way. But he needs workers. He has it all planned out. You know, if we, you know, some things that was interesting that I saw one time was um, how the Catholic Church, they have all of these, like, like, if you look into it, it gets really scary and kind of messy with all of, like, the Jesuits and stuff. They have all this, like, strategies on how to do everything. And can you imagine how much planning and everything they have to do for this. And yet they're, they have it harder than us. And why are 
that are more Catholics than... Why, why are they a dominant church? We are not doing our job. They have to plan it all out on their own. But God has it already planned out. All we have to do is gain that relationship with Him so we can know His voice, hear His voice, and be led by Him to fulfill each individual part of that Great Commission. And even though it may not make sense on the individual basis, when we go to heaven and we see that big picture of what God has done throughout, the his throughout history, we will be in awe. And that's all we have to do. But um, a problem we have... Well, you know, by beholding Christ in his word, we can become changed into what he is. You know, we, we must not be two-faced, but rather we must have only one face. And this, next. Oh, yes, this is what we must be. We must, next. We must be one-faced. We must not even have our face. Our life is not what must be seen. But by reading his word, by gaining that relationship with him, by beholding we become changed. And we must reflect Jesus. And this must be done throughout all the world. Everybody, and this is how our mission comes in. We must spread this news. We must spread what we must do what we have been called to do. And so this cannot be just reflected on the lives of a few here and there, but seen in a grand, big picture all across the world. And then Christ knows that he can come and those who love him will be ready to meet him. So, I want all who want to be awakened in their experience, they want to own up to what they've done, they want to spread his message, and ultimately, you want to reflect his character in you. I invite you to stand. Let's pray. Lord, we've failed you so many times. We've failed to grasp the significance of this plan and the battle that you're going through not only to defeat Satan but to even play out your side of the great I mean of the great controversy because it's you you love each one of us And if any of us are lost, there is a hole left in your heart for eternity. It will never go away. We don't want this to happen to you, Lord. We realize how amazing your love is and how mindless we are. We want to continue on with this knowledge and help us all to be the ones who finish this great controversy. Because the people who are talked about that will go through that end time, those end times, we often disconnect from them.
we often see that there's some amazing people, but I, I don't know who that is. That is us. We can be those people. It is possible through you. You've laid the plans the way you have all of them. Help us to say, Lord, here I am, send me. So this world and all this sin and all of this that is hurting us and hurting you can be gone. Help us to keep getting up when we fall and to continue on with you. And thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.